All right, for more on the market movements, James Gerrish from Shore and Partners and author of Market Matters joins us now live from Sydney. James, good to have a chat this morning. Uh, so, yeah, those moves overnight, quite dramatic. We have seen <coughs> the reversal of that rotation. Uh, but uh, do you think that's just temporary? Yeah, good morning to you guys. I, I think it actually could last a little bit longer than um, just a few days, as in a few weeks. So, you know, it's obviously been a pretty... Um, pretty key theme that's been playing out over the last uh, couple of months where we've seen movement out of technology, high value growth on the back of rising bond yields and into that sort of reflation um, value end of, the, uh, value end of the, the, the trading spectrum. So, yeah, I actually think it will. I think we saw a pretty key reversal in US 10 year bonds overnight. They traded above 1.6, they closed at 1.54. We actually picked it pretty well in our market yesterday. We had a big reversal, capitulation sort of low in those high value tech names early on. And then we had some really strong buying later in the day. So after pay close, you know, 7% from its lows, Zip was up 6% from its lows. CSL got whacked in the morning and closed up on the day. So um, yeah, I think we, I think this is a theme set to continue in the, uh, the short term at least. Yeah, so it was a buy the dip scenario. Why would that change today? Considering we've got Phil Lowe, the Reserve Bank governor speaking right now, reaffirming you know, that interest rates are unlikely to go anywhere before 2024. Uh, so, I mean, this is very much still, in your view, uh, a bullish story for equities going forward? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, the, the bigger picture backdrop is around low rates for longer, and that's what Philip Lowe is going to reinforce um, in his speech today. So I don't think that changes. I think it's a case of, you know, you look at how um, players are positioned or investors are positioned in the market, um, and you look at the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch uh, investor survey is a really good indication of how traders are positioned or investors are positioned. So, you know, um, uh, traders are, are very much long this market. So um, that speaks to low cash levels. You know, equities are a high allocation of portfolios at the moment. So that's why we're seeing more of a rotation around the sectors rather than outright buys and sells across the market. So I think it's going to continue to be a rotate. A, a, a theme where we see rotation across the market. And I think, you know, what we saw last night was, uh, you know, a key reversal, as I said before, in, in US interest rates. I think that now sets up for the um, sort of the trends that we saw play out in our market yesterday and then continued overnight in the US, where tech is now bought into and the reflation, the value orientated parts of the market, the resources, the banks, et cetera, um, will struggle in the next little while. And that uh, implies that the Aussie market, which is dominated by those areas, will underperform global markets um, in the next few weeks. I know it's very short term, but, um, but that's the view I'm taking uh, going into today and uh, for the next couple of weeks at least. Mm -hmm. hey James, you mentioned resources there, um, obviously. What's your view on uh, commodities more generally at the moment? Obviously, we saw the iron ore price uh, come off significantly overnight um, and the big miners certainly under pressure at the moment. So. What's the what's the backstory there? Do you think? Yeah. So last night you you would expect that uh, the US dollar came back last night, so you'd expect um, the broader commodity suite to be up. But we had oil off, we had um, copper off, etc. And they're more following what bond yields are doing, or the expectation around growth and reflation, etc. Gold is a, a an interesting one as well. So. Um, you know, gold had a, a pretty interesting reversal below $1,700 an ounce last night, rallied well to close a reasonable amount above $1,700 an ounce. If you tie that into interest rates, the, um, and we look at when gold was above 2000 US bond yields are at half a percent. US bond yields are now at 1.54% uh, as of overnight. And that's when gold is sort of uh, looks to me like it's had a low. So. Um, I think we're going to see some reversion lower in bond yields and a reversion higher in things like gold, but then that's going to be offset by the reflation commodities, the growth commodities, etc. I think copper has probably found a high. I think oil has probably found a high in the short term. So um, some uh, rotation out of those growth oriented commodities into things like gold, I think is the play for the next little while, guys. Yeah, gold. Okay. Uh, look. James, it's been great to have you joining us. Thank you so much. Before you go, actually, I'm going to sneak one in. Uh, Treasury Wine Estate out with a bit of news uh, before the open today. And we've seen you know, some buying in Treasury Wine Estates over the past you know, little while. Mm. What's your view on its ability 
to execute this transition away from China? I mean, is Treasury a place that you'd be putting your money or clients' money right now? Yeah, I don't, I don't have holdings in Treasury. I think the, the recent buying is around takeover speculation, um, you know, around, um, around that stock. So that's why it's been bid up pretty aggressively. You know, China's a pretty big market for it, but they've obviously got their sights on Treasury. And if you look at the actual proportion of profit that Treasury generate out of China versus the revenue they take there, uh, and you compare that to the rest of the world, you know, Treasury are doing very, very well out of the Chinese consumer. Um, so that does speak to China, you know, having a case in point that they, um, you know, the, for, for the reasons why they're sort of attacking Treasury and targeting Treasury wine. So, look, it's not one for me at the moment. I think it, you know, it, it has been bid up on takeover. It's cheap. If they can get the turnover turnaround right, uh, it will be bid up, uh, but a little bit too hard for me uh, there, Nadine. All right. I put you, uh, yeah, under the bus for that one. But thank you, James. I always appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, guys.